Hello, all the inter- interest TV viewers and listeners. Robbie, Robbie published its Q3 results today, and here with me is Robbie's CEO, Alex Pelletier Normand. Hi, Alex. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, you had pretty pretty nice quarter again, and there was lots of going on. So, could you give us a little highlights of the Q3 at the first? Yeah, I mean the uh, the Q3 was another quarter which in our biggest market which is the US was uh declining quite sharply uh, year on year the US market declined 50 15% year on year so we did pretty well during that quarter we grew 8% um and i think you know the main highlight for us was the performance of our live games it's really something that we um we concentrated on we put we put a lot of focus on live games uh this year so that's that's an important result for us and if we look at our top two games angry birds 2 grew also you know eight percent uh year on year and really the 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 star of the quarter was angry birds dream blast you know with with 18 percent year on year it actually grew 25 percent quarter on quarter so we're very very happy to see this result and of course we're eager to you know analyze carefully what what we did right you know on this game to uh to make sure that we uh reproduce it as well on our other big games like angry birds, angry birds friends and angry birds too um so um so yeah quite quite an uh, 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 a lot of things happening in the quarter and uh you know since live games is so important for us that's why we had other news to announce right to if we want to continue to support those live games we need we need more people right we need to grow the the size of those teams so we also announced for instance the opening of a studio in barcelona in spain yeah uh, actually my next question was about that could you a little bit open up that that topic more yeah absolutely so so th- this is a little bit of a different studio compared to, to the the ones that we have uh right now because they will focus on working with our puzzle studio uh in espo to uh to grow their live games right so the games that are already doing well you know already growing uh there's a lot of great expertise in barcelona to work on live ups to work on level design and we feel that it's good for us to have an, an additional talent pool to recruit from uh and not only recruit for this in in, in espo so that's what they're they're going to be focusing on and i think it's a good opportunity for us as well to internalize certain things that we used to do externally, um, like level design, for instance, something that historically we've been doing externally quite a lot. And as we want to raise the the you know the quality bar for those games that are that are doing well, uh, it makes sense to internalize more and more uh, of, of those things to have more you know editorial control over the content that we deliver. Yeah. And like you already mentioned, there was many live games performing really well on the quarter. But if we look at the declining games, there was like Angry Birds Journey was declining from uh, the previous quarter. And also Ruby Games had a pretty, pretty rough quarter. So could you a little bit open up what's going on with those those games? Yeah, so the, the Ruby Games and the uh, hyper casual market, I think, is is in flux the downloads decline for that market the 18% quarter on quarter so that's a pretty big decline and for us what this means is that uh we really want uh ruby games to focus more on hybrid casual games so that are a little bit closer to to casual games and those games are a little bit longer to do uh but they as you know they have a great ip to work from they have hunter assassin so now they have two games Uh, that will take advantage of the Hunter Assassin's IP. So one of them is a player versus player, you know, real-time multiplayer game uh, called Hunter Heroes. And the other one is Hunter Assassin's 2, which is uh, single player, a little bit more similar, but with a deeper meta game than the the first uh, uh, Hunter Assassin's. So they're they're really doing this transition there. And they they have actually four games. There There's two additional games that they have in, Uh, hybrid casual as it comes to uh angry birds journey as you said you know like quarter on quarter there's there's been a decline and uh when i look at the past few weeks actually stable the decline is pretty straightforward right we reduced the user acquisition investments because we didn't see the 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 return that we wanted to see um so you know it stabilized around you know five million 
um, quality run rate, which is not which is not good for for us in terms of when we release a new game, the ambition is much higher. Uh, but you know, I just like to keep in mind that. For for many of the games that are you know the stars of today like Angry Birds 2 and Angry Birds Dream Blast and even Angry Birds Friends they had you know they had pretty pretty uh, 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 tough quarters at the beginning and then we managed to turn things around um, so it takes some time so we want to give the team a little bit more uh, time for investigation iteration to see where this leads so we're going to be following this carefully in the next few quarters yeah. All right. Uh, then you opened up at the earnings call your games development pipeline a little bit more than before. So could you uh, give us some some updates from that on that front? Yeah, that's the most exciting part of the job, right? Uh, looking at those new games that are coming in the pipeline. That's uh, that's really fun. And the reason also why we open a little bit more about this is just because we test them on the market uh, earlier and earlier, right? And and our, our fans are picking up on those games. They 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 see it right away, and then they they start talking about it on social media. So might as well you know talk about it openly. But uh, so we talked about the games that you already know about. We talked about you know the movement, which is progressing as expected. Uh, we already mentioned Bad Biggies too. So this game is being done by a Stockholm studio. Super. I was playing it, uh, you know, an early prototype uh, uh, earlier this week, and it, it it looks good. And this is expected to reach shaft launch at the beginning of uh, of next year. We also talked about a new match three game that is being developed in our puzzle studio here in Espo. That you know, from the team that did uh, Small Town Murders. So uh, you know, this game looks good as well. We did some early uh, marketability tests on. Um, on the uh, a, an RPG Angry Birds game that is being done by our Copenhagen studio. Uh, this one we never talked about. And as I said just now, we have four hybrid casual games that are being done uh, by by Ruby Games. The new studio that we uh, you know uh, acquired in Montreal uh, is also working on some hybrid casual games. So uh, the pipeline is pretty healthy. Uh, officially, we talk about ten games in the pipeline, but those hybrid casual games, you know, it, they can iterate pretty fast. Uh, so at least 10 games. Yeah, that's interesting. Lots of, lots of stuff happening there. Uh, l- let's then talk about the outlook. If we, we are, Everybody knows that the mobile gaming market has been pretty tough this year, and it was still in the Q3 declining. But do you see any signs of improvement? And you actually gave the guidance for the user acquisition for Q4 and you're like planning to increase the UA. So do you see like opportunities to still grow your live portfolio or where is that coming from? Yeah, I mean, I mentioned at the beginning of the call that the US market declined uh, quite sharply year on year. But what's interesting to note is that quarter on quarter was pretty stable. It was only minus 1%. And so will this trend continue? It, it it looks much better than it did a few quarters ago, right? So like there there are some signs of recovery. So let's see, let's see what will happen there. What, what is certain is that on our side, we continue to see opportunities like we did with Dream Blast at the beginning of the quarter. We still see those opportunities now. So we can we can invest more in a profitable manner. So when we talk about those additional UA investment, you know, the difference is not. Um, not that big. We talked between uh, 28 and 33 percent of game revenues uh, to be invested in user acquisition in Q4, and this this can be explained really by two reasons, right? First of all, Q4 is actually a pretty uh, active quarter in terms of event. We have Halloween, we have you know Christmas, um, so there's there's many things that are happening in games. It's generally very uh, very good quarter for mobile gaming and also you know on top of this we see we see good opportunities to to uh, uh, continue to invest in games like uh, Angry Birds Dream Blast so that's why we guided it slightly uh, um, above uh, what we spent in Q3 for uh, for uh, UA investments all right and then last question uh Robbie started a small share buyback program just couple of weeks ago, you're planning to buy like 1% out of the shares. Uh, what is like the purpose behind this? And can we see more more of the buybacks after now when you have paid the Ruby games uh, 50% uh, acquisition, acquisition or half of the acquisition with with, with, couple, with your shares? So what's what's yeah, the I mean, logic behind yeah, this? Yeah, so those, those shares are... 
<laughs> yeah, th those shares can be very useful because we can use them to, you know, to pay for acquisition like we did for Ruby. And we also use them for long term incentive programs that we have for certain employees. And as you know, we're, we, we, we can only own 10 percent. Uh, of our of our share, so this program will bring us very close to the maximum that we can that we can own. And after that, you know, like those those share buyback program are decided by the board. The board gets to decide, you know, if they 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 believe that we need more shares or not. So there's really nothing more that I can share at this point. All right, thank you, Alex, for the interview, and I wish the best of luck for you the, for the rest of the year. Always a pleasure to chat. Thank you.